press conference of the day will be getting underway shortly, but first just a few house housekeeping notes to have things run smoothly. We'll be bringing the cast out and we'll do 90 seconds of flash photography with the cast standing. And then the still st photographers, we're gonna ask you to leave because capacity is very tight here. So thanks for that. Please remember there's no, uh, uh, please remember that all mobile phones are off. Media, please stand and identify yourself and your media outlet before asking your question. And today's press conference will be streamed live on www.tiff.net slash festival. And now it's my pleasure to bring out the director, producer, and the cast of the film, The Ides of March, as well as our moderator, Henri Bayard. Photographers, go. please be kind enough now to uh, leave the room. This is our ensemble. Ensemble. I don't know if I'm finished. Photographers, please. Okay, hello everyone <laughs> and welcome to the press conference for the Ides of March and uh, I'll introduce the people who are here at this panel, not exactly the way they appear on the dais, but uh, in a more logical way as pertains to the film. Uh, at the center, as the liberal uh, governor who's running for nomination for the Democratic Party, and the President of the United States, Mr. George Clooney. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting next to him as Stephen Meyer, his uh, uh, press secretary, I guess, who will receive a crash course in dirty politics and real fast. Uh, not uh, actually from two masters in the genre, Mr. Philip Seymour Hoffman and Mr. Paul Giamatti. Uh, an aide. Um, sorry, Mr. Wright are the man, is the man whose voices and votes they're trying to buy, I mean acquire. <laughs> uh, next to him, um, a campaign aide, Mr. Max Minghella. Next to him, an, uh, an intern, ambitious, who gets into trouble, Miss uh, Evan Rachel Board. And... Just a second, I'm getting there, okay. guys. <laughs> As a journalist from the New York Times, hard as nail, Marisa Tomei. And I'll get back to the gentleman at the center and the gentleman sitting next to me. Grant Haslow is co-writer 
and co-producer of the film, and the man at the center with whom I started the introduction, who actually quadruples up as actor, director, co-writer, producer, Mr. George Clooney. Choreographer. <laughs> that too. <laughs> and we have a first question way over there, then the lady here. Okay, as which of this lady? Okay. This one, yes, with the glasses, the blonde. Hi there, Gloria Martin with 680 News uh, in Toronto and national. Uh, Mr. Clooney, do your political uh, leanings affect the roles you take or the movies you choose to direct and write? Uh, not particularly. I didn't think of this as a, a really a political film. I thought this was a film about sort of moral choices, and I, I don't think that that has any necessarily any political stripe. I just thought it was a, a fun moral tale, and once you put it in politics, it sort of amps up the, all the problems. I thought that was fun. Sort of back. Welcome yes, to go ahead. Okay, welcome to Toronto. This is Linda Che from Fairchild TV of Toronto. George, tell me, George Clooney as the director, film director. Mm -hmm. Tell you what? <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty much, and I don't want to blow anybody's mind, pretty much the same guy as George Clooney, the actor. Um, <laughs> Basically the same height, same hair, <laughs> pretty much the same. Um, did you get that extra one for yeah, I did. I did get that extra one. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what you want me to say about it, except that uh, um, I, I'm lucky enough to work with a great bunch of actors who sort of elevate the project. So uh, that's the secret to directing, I think, is working with really good people. How's that for a political answer? Paul, <laughs> huh? come on. No, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey, yeah, you in? Yeah, I, I, yes. I concur. You are Kenneth. I concur. I have a question for George. Uh -oh. Mr. Uh, Clooney. Again. <laughs> As an actor, director, uh, you know what are you expecting for yourself, but what are you expecting from other actors, and how did you come about this absolutely terrific cast? And did you g have to give them the ropes, or not really? Well, I had some pictures of a few of them in compromising positions, so I got them to say yes. Actually, some of them on together, but that's, uh, we won't we'll let you guys figure that out. You two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> that was after I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you know, w when you get these guys, they just, you know, you just, they like the script, they wanted to do the part, and you sort of get out of the way, mostly. So, um, uh, you know, I forgot the question. I'm so, con I'm so confused by the photo. It really <laughs> is a serious film. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, qu question to Mr. Bruce Kirkland, way over there. Okay, start shouting anyway, Bruce. That's all right. Oh, oh, sorry. Well, not with a microphone in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Bruce Kirkland, Toronto Sun, Sun Media. I, w I do want to go back to Mr. Clooney, political thing. I watched this film and thought I should never vote again because what's the point? It's That's a what I tried to do. <laughs> it's a rollicking piece of entertainment. It's a thriller. It's, you know, it's political drama. But it does have this message that's very cynical. Screw the idealists. Crush them. And I'm, and I'm kind of curious if you do want a uh, the greater good to be seen in the message of this film going into the next presidential election in your country? Well, I think it, you know, f you gotta remember that films don't lead the way. You know, people a lot of times think that, that films somehow are trying to lead society. You know, in general, it takes about two years I at, at the very least to get a film made. So mostly we're reflecting the moods and thoughts that are going on in our country or around the world. So we're, if this film reflects some of the cynicism that's, that we've seen in, in recent times, that's probably good. It's not a bad thing to hold a mirror up and look at some of the things that we're doing. It, not a bad thing to look at how we elect our officials at times like that. But that wasn't what the film was designed to do. I mean, honestly, the idea was for us that there isn't a person you've ever met that hasn't been faced with certain moral questions. You know, every one of us has had that idea of, well, if I take this job, which is better, I might be screwing over my boss who I like. You know, everybody has a moral, 
uh, makes moral choices that better themselves and hurt someone else along the way. And, th and whether or not that the means justify the ends. And that, to me, is universal. And it could have been literally in Wall Street, <laughs> actually probably easier in Wall Street. Uh, it could have been anywhere. So that was, that was our point. That's what we're trying to do. Hi, I have an sorry. It was louder, wasn't it? Hi, yes. uh, I have another question for George. I'm Fred Topel with Crave Online. One of the frustrating things about politicians is they may say whatever they can to uh, attract as many voters as possible. And now it seems like there's some politicians that are happy to represent as specific a niche as possible. Why do you think that is, and do you think we'll come back to when politicians try to serve a greater base? Well, I think everything's cyclical, and I think that we're in a period of time right now where uh, it's probably not our best moment in politics, in the political sort of cycle. But I also have great, uh, you know, if you look at the things that uh, uh, Jefferson and Adams did to one another, you know, uh, th there's, there's an awful lot. The 1800 election was pretty evil and pretty rotten, so things change, and they are cyclical. So I, I, I'm hopeful. While, while the mic is grabbing, uh, the, the question could be in, in a way extended to everybody on this panel. It's very well known, Mr. Clooney, that you're quite a political animal, <laughs> and uh, you've worked very much at uh, whatever it is that you've done. Uh, are you guys political animals and you ladies? Are you involved in politics in any way? <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> Uh, an animal. An animal. Um, <laughs> political animal. Um, I, I, well, I guess having been grown up and uh, having been born and, and, and raised in Washington, D.C., we're all uh, animals and some political. Um, I, you know, you kind of absorb politics when you grow up there. Uh, and it certainly, uh, you know, continues to be a focus of mine, probably more so than is healthy for me. Um, What's fantastic about uh, being a part of a film like this or other films that I've done that have that kind of relevance is you get to express some of that through the work. So um, even though I agree with George that this isn't so much so uh, uh, necessarily uh, needs to be pinned down to a political film, because I, I, I viewed it more as a gangster film, <laughs> but it's a film about human behavior. It could be anywhere, but um, uh, I did get to express some of my uh, political animalistic side through this, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, like any citizen, you know, to be informed, you know, and I think I'm attracted with what Jeffrey was saying is that, I don't know, the older I get, the, my desire to know more and to be a part of it and to feel like you're taking part in it, it grows and grows, I think. And so like, you know, a job like this, it's the best of both worlds because it's a great dramatic kind of character driven thing, but with the underlying political element that allows you to kind of, basically at work we talk about it, we talk, you know, we talk a lot of things, but politics would eventually come up and we'd talk about that and it's, you know, it was good. Hello, my name is Ernesto Garrat from El Mercurio newspaper uh, from Chile. I have a question for Mr. Clooney. Uh, uh, can you share with us some moment of your, I don't know, uh, youth when you took conscious politics, I don't know, talking about with your father maybe or something. And one question for Mr. Gosling, uh, a comment for your character who was working with Mr. Clooney. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it was really fun to work with George, right, guys? Keep going. Okay. Go on. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. It was more than fun. It was life-altering. 
be honest, I... It was, watching him work was like watching a unicorn being born every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's rare to work with a director that uh, is as, as uh, clear as George is and, and knows exactly what he wants. And sometimes it felt like uh, someone trying to uh, um, explain a song that was in their head. I mean, he, know, he, knew, it, 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 he knew this film inside and out, and I was, uh, I was surprised by his... his his level of enthusiasm f for f just for filmmaking in general, you know, he all he wanted to do was talk about the film and uh, and 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 break it down. And he would he would talk you through the scenes, and then he would even hum what he thought the music might be like. And he would talk you through each, you know, it's like it talk you through the movie in real time. And uh, and you know he was very uh, very clear, and he would give you this like incredible direction, and and it was just so focused, and you're ready to do the scene, and then he'd walk away, and you'd realize that he was spraying an Avion bottle on your crotch. <laughs> 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 and then he'd make you do your big scene with Phil Hoffman or Paul Giamatti with wet pants. <laughs> so that's kind of what it was like, right? That's pretty much what it's yeah. like. That's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. A two-parter, if I may. It's Margot Kelly from CBC Radio. And I'm wondering, first, uh, Ryan, why did you want this role? What was it about this role that you really liked? And if I may ask uh, Mr. Clooney to follow up with, what did you think of Ryan's performance? Oh, you don't have to answer that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, you know, <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think he knocks it out of the park. Look, this is a very, very difficult role. You've got um, you've got to be the center of uh, of a hurricane, and you have to carry everyone and everybody's uh, point of view on your shoulders. And it's a very difficult thing to do. It requires uh, intelligence uh, in an actor, which doesn't always happen for some reason. I don't know. Um, no, it was it, working with Ryan was just a, a delight, and working with all these actors really makes it, I'm, I'm quite serious, as you well know, makes it very easy because they're so wonderful. And Ryan gives a, just a tremendous performance in this film. And, I, and I'm honored that, uh, that he and everyone else did it. And you had a, you had a question? Do you remember it? Yeah, what, what made me want to do the film? It was it, what, why did I want to do the film? Yeah. I, I wanted to work with George, you know? I mean, if George asks you to be in his movie, you just do the movie. And uh, all of these actors are my favorite actors, so it was just a no-brainer for me. Hi, Eva with 680 News. Uh, this question's for Ryan. Being Canadian, uh, I wanted to know if you think, I know American politics, that's something everyone follows. Do you think a movie like this could work with Canadian politics, and uh, do you follow Canadian politics? Um, I think it would be, it would just be more, no, the Canadian version would <laughs> <laughs> The Canadian version would be too nice. <laughs> uh, oh, it wouldn't be, actually. <laughs> I bet it's probably just as dirty up here as it is anywhere else. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy, Paul. You people are filthy corrupt <laughs> up here, aren't you? Wait a second. I think it's time to blow the lid off of Canadian <laughs> politics, What's right? Gotten into you? Yeah. What do you think? Hey, yeah. Scoble with Bell Simpatico in Movies. And uh, actually, this leads perfectly into my next question, which is for Ryan. Uh, we all know why George Clooney isn't going to run for president. Uh, he's been very clear, too many women, too many drugs. Uh, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> your I'm words. Joke and I feel <laughs> but uh, Ryan, even if that were the case for you, as we all know here in Canada, wouldn't really be an issue. So. Would you consider bringing your charisma to the Canadian political landscape? Oh, I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> you want to get in politics in Canada? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi there, Andrea Case, CTV News Toronto. Welcome, everyone. Um, as much as I'd like to ask uh, George and Ryan a question, let's hear from the ladies. Uh, Marissa and Evan, 
What was it like making a film with all these lads? Uh, those of us who follow entertainment news, we saw lots of pictures of the guys going out uh, when making the film. What was it like to be a part of this happy band of movie makers? Marissa, Evan? It was, fu it was great fun, but uh, well, I wasn't going out with you guys when I was there. Why Don't was tell that? tell everybody, we went out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I missed that. What do you mean they all went out? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you kept staying on the outside. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, had a, I had an amazing time. I mean, I'm, 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 I grew up with t older brothers, and, you know, all my friends are guys, so I felt really comfortable with, with all these amazing people. Um, and they're all so funny and, and, um, just, f I don't know, they're just the best guys in the world. Look at them. I mean, I, I feel like the luckiest woman ever, quite honestly. Um, George is slipping me money under the table, by the way. <laughs> it's um, not money. <laughs> 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 Hand check! Um, so this is exactly what it was like, you know? Yeah, it was just nonstop. Like. This is a pretty good example, yeah, you know? It was amazing. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> And my character is one of the guys, it, it, so it, it was, it, I could uh, use that energy as well in the scenes, too. And, and, I, and I was kind of, and I was intimidated, too, even to kind of hold that space. And I would say to George, I think, I, well, you would tell me, you have the most power in this scene. I, oh, I have the most power in this scene? <laughs> really? I told, I told everybody that. By oh, that's <laughs> but that, I think that's one of the cool things about the women in this film, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I love my character so much, is that she's not intimidated by any of these men. She's been raised in, in this world, you know, and, in, and, and around them. So um, she's the one that's really throwing them all off their game, you know. Um, so it was, it was fun. It was fun to kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those guys. My name is Martin Van Dyke. I'm from Ann Arbor.com and Ann Arbor's 1071. Uh, Mr. Clooney, the U of M campus was energized and thrilled to have you in the cast shooting in Ann Arbor. Could you talk about your experiences shooting specifically in Michigan? How much of the film was shot in Michigan? It, sadly, it looks like your film is going to be the last major film to benefit from the Michigan Film Incentives because sure, of that's the too bad about big it. reduction. But well what was your really experience like? I mean, well, we loved it there. I mean, first of all, Ann Arbor is an amazing <laughs> city. We got there on St. Patrick's Day, and everyone was drinking green beer, and everyone was screwed up. And I was like, oh, this town is made for me. <laughs> um, but I loved, we loved being on the campus there. We loved sh Look, we loved shooting all around uh, Detroit and in Ar Ann Arbor. It was a, y you know, the, the, when, you're, when you go to Detroit, you see a town that's just resilient that's just fighting to, to, to win again and it's you know there's an energy to cities like that um, I remember New York going through that in the mid 80s and early 80s and and just watching uh, a city really fighting to get back on its feet is and watching sort of the the inner strength of a city like that's just tremendous and uh, you know we, we loved shooting there could have done without some of the weather uh, but that's nothing I can really speak to hi there Jessica Allen from McLean's um, I thought the ending to the film was just pitch perfect and it was filled with so much tension and it w I was so nervous actually as a, as a viewer leading up to the ending because I didn't want to be disappointed. You had me the whole way through and, and so the ending was just lovely and I'm wondering for the writers, uh, Mr. Hasloff and Mr. Clooney, was that something that evolved or did you have that sort of nailed down in one of your initial drafts? Thank you, Grant. Uh, we actually wrote the ending first. Mm -hmm backwards so we we gave it away to ourselves very early <laughs> and then um, we wrote to that I'm glad you liked it you have the mic go ahead yeah hi Laszlo Kristen from Hungary and Australia uh, I, there's so much talk about Did you just say Hungary and Australia Hungary and that's Australia? right but I even covered New Zealand and Romania. I didn't want to mention it. Anyhow, yes, it's a global business. There's so much talk about show business being very competitive. I just wonder if any of any one of you has been so hardly and Machiavellianly outmaneuvered, like Paul Giamatti tried to destroy Ryan Gosling in this movie. Have you had any sort of? Uh, showbiz intrigues like that? Mm, no. Mm. no, Hollywood's like Canada. It's very <laughs> clean. Very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very much not like Canada. None of that, not on the surface. Mm. Anyway. It's all very... 
You're right. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> <laughs> For Mr. Clooney, um, congratulations on the film. You knock it out of the park. Um, but in a light, hard, fun way, I wanted to ask you, which is harder, directing or dating in the uh, spotlight? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I knew someone would do it. I'm a little disappointed it's you. <laughs> I mean, everyone here is a little ashamed of you right now. <laughs> Honestly. T what's your name? Paul, Paul what? Paul what? Paul Chi. Everybody remember that name. <laughs> the hard-hitting interview by Paul. Listen, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's tremendous that you ask the question. Go back and tell your editor you asked the question, okay? <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> nice one. Hi, everybody. I'm Rosietta with uh, ET Canada. And I wanted to know from all the panels, um, when you watch George direct, does it make you want to get into that field, or do you go, I don't want any part of it? Are those the only two choices? <laughs> 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 yeah, right. I thought it was pretty inspiring. I don't know, that's just me. Um, I love the fact that George uses, um, you know, his status and, and, and where he's at and everything, that he's learned to um, tell the stories that he wants to tell and, um, you know, I, I think this this film was just fueled by 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 passion, for, you know, um, honestly, for the, everyone that, that worked on it. And I think he, it's amazing um, the way he assembles a cast, you know, and the and the um, the way that he handles the set. You know, it's not just about making a good film; it's about making having a great experience making it. And um, that was just that was in inspiring, just so you know. Okay. All right. <laughs> You know, also, you got to remember that on this day, there are a lot of very accomplished directors already, and those that haven't directed uh, on, this, uh, on this group uh, probably will and do a wonderful job. They're all very intelligent and also seem to have an interest in that. So it's, I'm, I, I get to learn from them as well. Yeah. Hi, it's Arissa Cox from CBC News. Um, so Ides of March was at Venice. You're here at Toronto. Uh, have you, gotten, have you guys already gotten sick of the Oscar buzz? I know many of you have been nominated or won Oscars before, so I know you're, you've been on this train before, but are you sick of it already, hearing that word? Oscar. I, Bill, take it, will you? Uh, <laughs> so I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so sick of the Oscar buzz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sick of it. I'm not being nominated. I'm not going to get nominated. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just like it's like a, it's like a weight on your yeah. back. It's like enough. Everyone out. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, uh, so right. It's a big pan. Oh, it's just like I uh, might win an award. Uh, <laughs> uh, Black. Uh, anyway, you told me to answer. <laughs> I to answer. Okay, uh, next time don't answer that. <laughs> Susan Green, Burlington Free Press, Vermont, the land of Howard Dean. Um, I was wondering how many of you may have <laughs> is seen... Is that what they're calling it now? <laughs> <laughs> is that on the license plate no, no, in Vermont right. now? No, it's when you drive in, it's on the sign. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to no, Vermont. No, we're actually calling it the land of Bernie Howard. Sanders. Oh, you do? <laughs> I was wondering uh, how many of you may have seen the play Farragut North? Who saw the play? Uh, Grant, Grant, three. Grant three of us. <laughs> it was like she had something on her list. She's like, no, I've just done that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've always seen very good ones. <laughs> Mark DeGlasses, West Australian. Question for George. Uh, are there any particular politicians, American politicians, you modeled your character on? <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many ways to get in trouble with that answer. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, there really weren't. I mean, um, uh, there were some of the speeches that I... I used were some of the things and ideas that my dad used to write about in the late 70s in the newspaper. Um, and the idea of, uh, of uh, him having uh, some of these issues that he has seemed to pop up on, you know, pretty much almost every week in politics. So it didn't, r it seemed sort of familiar to us in a lot of ways. People thought it was about the John Edwards thing, but this was written long before the John Edwards thing broke. So, you know, it's, we didn't really model it after anybody. There was enough <laughs> There were enough examples that we could just pick little pieces all we wanted, you know. 
Oh, yeah. Yes, I know. Well, they do that now, I hear. Did Maurice Tomei ever contact Judith Miller, for instance, uh, at the New York Times? Or <coughs> is there any other journalist from the New York Times, female journalist, that you Judith approach? Judith Miller? <laughs> um, no, uh, there wasn't anyone specifically that this character was based on, and uh, the, the guys gave me some documentaries to watch of, uh, about some journalists on the campaign buses, but there's no correlating job, really, at the times. The level of position she'd have wouldn't really be on the road with these fellas, so it was a kind of a conflagration of a few people, I guess. Or no one. <laughs> I don't know. He had a few people in mind, I guess, but there was no one really specific, and it wasn't modeled on anybody. Ma'am. Hi. Um, my name's Constance Draganis. I'm from CTV.ca. And I have a question about one scene in the movie, which I thought was just amazing. And it's the scene where Philip's character, the loyal guy, goes into the governor's limo. And you're left to imagine the carnage that's going on inside that limo. And I was curious if that scene was shot as is, or was there an evolution, a discussion between you guys of how to handle that moment? Because it was pretty great. It's one of those funny things where it's like, no, we didn't discuss no. it. No. George, George was sick that day. Yeah, I was no, sick. You, George, you had a, <laughs> he's like, listen, I'm just going to go in the car. <laughs> yeah. I'll shoot this way. And like, yeah, I'm going to come back and just shoot that way. Maybe put the cigarette on the thing. Okay. We might shoot the ash going down. All right. We'll see how long. Maybe okay. we'll stay along and then we'll maybe a little Good. longer. Good. Cool with that. <laughs> like yeah. that. And then we're like, okay, go. <laughs> Action. And then we're like, uh, yeah. Because we knew what it was. Yeah. We, we, uh, we, we, he had talked, George had actually talked to me about it before. Like weeks before, about like the moment or something in a past. So you, but you kind of know what, it, so you kind of get the logistics, the technical logistics of it, and then you kind of have to imbue it with something, and hopefully it, it's the right thing. And right, yeah. but no, it's like well, also you know, we you, you sort of those are those kind of scenes where anything you could shoot would never be as good as anybody else's imagination, and that's why, you know, seeing the scene and you know we left you long enough to to imagine what just happened and what was going on in the scene and to come up with your own story. And it's sort of the version of reading, you know, when you read books, um, a lot of times it's so much better than when you see them, you know, sort of fleshed out. And it's just sometimes better to leave stuff up to people's imagination. And so that was what one. What are you guys doing in the car? That we just like shooting the shit in the yeah. car while that was the camera was just sitting there? Smoking. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. I, I was like wondering, is the cigarette going to last? <laughs> I remember thinking of that. Yeah. <laughs> Gretchen Putnam from E! News. Ryan, I'd like to ask you, aside from the prank with the water bottle, how George helped you with your performance. Oh boy, I'm running out of cash. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's kind of personal, <laughs> the relationship between the director and the actor, but he was very, uh, you know, he, uh, he helped me uh, to, uh, to, um, You know, look, George, George was possessed by this film, you know? He was just possessed by it. So there was no, I, I just, was, it was nice for a change to just be able to, uh, to just, to just uh, be directed, you know? And, uh, and, and, uh, and so uh, uh, that was it. I just trusted him and I just, uh, I just allowed him to, to take me into this world. The answer is I didn't actually have to help him, you know? So it That's all worked nice. out. I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, our time is up. Thank you very much for Thank all being here. Thank you, guys. Here. Have fun.